thank you very much, Muthanna, uh, Khaled, and also Murad. So uh, the UAE is a small country, so uh, I believe all the universities here uh, are not competing with each other. They are just complementing each other. And uh, I represent uh, the uh, Sharjah Center for Awesome Space Sciences, that some of you know, uh, which is also part of the University of Sharjah. Uh, at the Sharjah Center for Awesome Space Sciences, uh, our main goal is to do space science research. So we have, uh, uh, we're able uh, with uh, the support of our leadership and also the support of the USPGC uh, to create several labs. We have uh, uh, CubeSat Laboratory and hopefully by uh, next year, mid of 2020, we're going to send the Sharjah Sat-1, which will be an X-ray uh, CubeSat. Uh, we have also uh, a radio astronomy laboratory, so uh, one part of that laboratory, we have a decametric <coughs> radio telescope, which is uh, sponsored by the US Agency, and hopefully uh, by next April, we're going to have the first 40-meter uh, uh, radio telescope uh, in the Gulf area. Uh, and also we have, uh, we have uh, the Meteorite Center. Uh, it has uh, several parts. One part of it is uh, uh, the UE Meteor Monitoring uh, Network, which is also sponsored by the UE Agency. It has uh, uh, three towers that observe the sky of the UE, uh, from sensor to uh, sunrise to look, uh, to look for space debris. It can be uh, natural, like meteors, can be falling satellites, and this system is, is working perfectly. Uh, well, up to now, we have observed more than 7,000 meteors, and some of them are quite big, so big fireballs and so on and hopefully uh, we'll be able to, det to detect uh, the location of, this, of these meteorites. And this will be part of another uh, section of the Meteorite Center. We have what you call the machine learning. So we are teaching a drone how to recognize uh, a meteorite from a meteor uh, using AI, artificial intelligence, and uh, my research assistant that are here present so they can tell more about it. Uh, besides that, we have also a space weather and atmospheric lab. Uh, it is worth about 1.5 million dirhams in terms of instruments. And it, it is part of what you call uh, studying the upper atmosphere to see exactly uh, the, uh, the negative effect of the solar wind uh, on space weather. Uh, so th these are just part of the, uh, of the research lab that we are building uh, uh, at the center. Uh, since I said I am part of the University of Sharjah, so we have as uh, UAU, uh, we have several programs that will, be, that will see light hopefully uh, this coming fall. So we have an MSc in aerospace engineering. Uh, and also an MSc in astronomy and space sciences. So this is part of the whole picture to be uh, to 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 fulfil uh, the uh, the vision uh, of the UAE in terms of uh, space exploration and also NRD. Uh, so uh, we have uh, we have more than four thousand students in the engineering and also sciences uh, the colleges uh, that are very dedicated to space science. Uh, this is a first uh, a first step. Uh, hopefully, also by next fall, we're going to have two new research labs. We're going to have uh, uh, an artificial intelligence lab and also a balloon and some orbital uh, uh, rocket uh, lab. So these two labs will be uh, uh, will be the backbone uh, of the University of Sharjah, because we have a long vision uh, to be uh, to be uh, to be uh, to be a major player uh, in space sciences research, and hopefully. Uh, as I said, uh, we are a small country, so uh, all of us that are here, so we're going to uh, uh, complement in what we are doing. So uh, competition is not, is not permitted, uh, because as Khaled said, so uh, uh, some universities are strong in engineering, some universities are strong in sciences, and every one of us will have, uh, will ha will have a role to play uh, in, the, in the vision of the UAE Space, uh, Space Agency. Thank you, Dr. Thank you. Dr. Khaled, please, from Yes. Thank you, Mutanda, for allowing me to speak in front of this uh, audience. Uh, as a matter of fact, Zaid University is one of the youngest university. It's about 20 years uh, old, and uh, it's accredited nationally and internationally. Both Zaid University and the space agencies are uh, federal, uh, federal entities, and they share common goals and uh, missions. Uh, basically, uh, we emphasize on preparing Emirati students for the 21st century life and help shape the future of the UAE and lead innovative in higher education. Now, to materialize this vision and mission, we signed the MOU and agreements to agreements with the Space Agency to fund miscellaneous research activities and national building capacities that you know, yielded several projects and collaborative initiatives. One of the collaborative initiatives is working with the our colleagues at uh, Sharjah University to study the invasive species and the rate of uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, invasiveness and also the impact of some species on the groundwater. 
Also, we work with uh, uh, you know Emirates University on uh, uh, you know uh, mineral mapping using remote sensing. As for the facility at at Zaid University, we have uh, one of the advanced hyperspectral uh, uh, laboratory, I believe, in the region. Uh, we have uh, uh, you know state of the art uh, equipment, and uh, dozens of our students uh, use these equipments in their research projects and. Uh, uh, you know, uh, classroom. Um, as for the curriculum, uh, basically we use the remote sensing uh, technology in uh, the environmental uh, uh, system courses and the uh, environmental uh, chemistry courses as well. And soon we will have uh, a master program that has uh, a track on remote sensing. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much for the question. So, but allow me to speak from my heart, please. Uh, I was, uh, I remember the first day when we received the call for proposal, so it, bought, it was about three years ago, and I was very happy because uh, this is the way uh, to, uh, to fulfill your STEM education dreams because we have a lot of students here that do not like to do science because they don't see any, any real application. So having uh, to write all of these proposals uh, in CubeSat, uh, ionosphere, uh, radio, and so on, so it was very, very uh, a big excitement for me well, because uh, this is the way that we should uh, do to push a young mind to, to go to science, to engineering, and so on. Uh, even though not all of our proposals were accepted, that's fine. It gave us uh, a, a big push to do better. Uh, but this is, I believe, the way that uh, the US agency has to continue to do. Uh, is to propose new ideas. We can also also propose new ideas uh, because uh, we are we have we have several uh, strong colleges, and uh, there is nothing negative. Uh, there is nothing co co against. So it is always a positive step uh, to be to be asked to uh, for proposals, and also for sure uh, nothing is uh, is granted uh, from the from the first time. Uh, but at least uh, it was a way uh, for us, uh, as far as I can see, it, uh, to weaken a little bit, uh, to work hard, uh, to, th to have a clear vision of the future uh, that is aligned with the U.S. Peace Agency uh, vision. And uh, for us, for, as far as I can see it, it was very beneficial for us. So it did open our eyes to the future. Thank you very much. Yeah. Uh, Dr. To be honest with you, I don't have a stronger preference with unsolicited or unsolicited. Each one of them, uh, you know, serve, uh, serve certain uh, purpose. But usually solicited, uh, you know, it serve a very specific research need that the funding agency is looking for. And, uh, you know, de depending on the capability of the institution, whether, you know, the infrastructure, the human resources time, they will respond or not. But unsolicited, uh, uh, you know, uh, usually allow for more ideas and new ideas to be uh, funded and a new collaboration uh, to be evolved. So I'm leaning toward unsolicited. <laughs>